Hey, welcome back into today's video. We have a very interesting video today. Uh, as you know, yesterday in rep reports, I talked about how Monkey Jones's channels were deleted. He was not good, gonna get them back. And now he, his new channel that he just created, it was deleted too. So I got to thinking about it. And at first I was like, oh man, it's a conspiracy. And I watched a couple videos from different creators and I had this new opinion formed and I want to share it with you. You should not get a strike if it was uploaded more than a year ago. To punish yes. somebody today for a video that they made in the past that might have been okay back then but now isn't, like it's retroactively breaking the terms of service. You can right. remove the video. But why does my channel have to get a strike and then get terminated for something so they, that I they did, did 18 months ago? They didn't give you a chance. And so and no. so talk about that. They didn't give you a chance to even correct yourself. To That's scary. Um, if you guys are familiar with Tim Pool, he did a video where he was talking about the reasons and or why or why not they're doing this. And he, he went into the specifics of advertisement and he even talked about he compared it closely to the YouTube Rewind as in how uh, the YouTube Rewind seemed so disconnected to the community, but in reality, it wasn't ever targeted towards the community, but it was actually more targeted towards the advertisers. So that was a commercial video for advertisers. That's why you had Will Smith in there. That's why you had uh, everything that was going on. It was literally a mainstream commercial t for advertisers like Pepsi and Coke and saying, hey, uh, we're family friendly, we're this, we're that, come on, bring your ads over here, and it's all uh, priority based by money. And they're moving towards this direction, and a lot of it is because YouTube is now more mainstream, and they don't want controversial topics or creators or anything like that. They're moving away from that, and this is their sanitization purpose. And the reason that Monkey Jones, like literally Monkey Jones cannot even create a channel as he created a new channel just yesterday and it, it, was, it was deleted. They're moving towards this direction because the whole entirety of the internet is at this day and age becoming more mainstream. So the more mainstream it becomes, they want it to be uh, very advertiser friendly because we're talking about huge corporations. YouTube is owned by Google and they're trying to get it prioritized in that direction. At first glance, I thought that this was a conspiracy theory because they were weeding out creators specific to YouTube, but this isn't specific to the YouTube platform as you might have heard of Sargon who was deplatformed off of Patreon and it was for similar reasons. I've been on Patreon for what three or four years now? and I've never had a problem, and so I thought, well, I'd better email Jack Conti, the CEO of Patreon, because clearly there has been some kind of mistake. I said, hi Jack, sorry to bother you, but I woke up today to find my Patreon account had been removed. I have not been provided with a reason why, and naturally I assume this is some kind of mistake, as I don't believe I have ever exhibited any manifest observable behaviour that would warrant this. Would you be able to help me out please, thanks in advance, and Merry Christmas. Manifest observable behavior means that uh, kind of like if you're working at a job, if you're working in a job or a career and you was to get arrested or if you was to do something just wrong, then that job would let you go. You guys might have be familiar with this. You might have had this experience, but that's kind of what manifest observable behavior is about. And literally Sargon was removed from Patreon for something that he said on a completely different platform. That platform was YouTube. Luckily for me, I received an email from Patreon a few hours later. Hello, Carl. My name is Sydney, and I'm on the trust and safety team here at Patreon. I want you to know that my team and I removed your creator page for violating our community guidelines around hate speech. Patreon doesn't allow creators to use racial slurs as insults. In a conversation posted on Michelle Caitlin's YouTube channel, you use language that we consider harmful and degrading. For this reason, your Patreon creator page has been removed. And I thought to myself, that's really interesting. It is very interesting because you have two different creators on two different platforms that are deplatformed for similar reasons. I believe the internet is transforming into this thing 
that is catering to the mainstream. And so if not to offend the people that are on there and be more advertiser friendly to have a better environment. Let's take, for example, uh, a big comp a big restaurant, uh, McDonald's, right? So McDonald's is advertiser friendly and it's gonna stay advertiser friendly. It's not gonna have anything edgy on it. It's just a corporation, it's nice and clean. Uh, and that's why they are able to get advertisements with Coca-Cola and all the different kinds of brands like that. That's what YouTube wants. That's what the internet wants. And I think the internet is going to move to more towards that as time goes on. So after watching a lot of videos, doing a lot of research on this, it became completely obvious to me that this is not just something that YouTube's doing or Patreon's doing. It is the entire internet that is doing it. And as time goes, you're gonna see this. Uh, it's pretty obvious. Uh, like if you go out to the restaurant, I, I went out to get breakfast this morning and uh, as I was sitting in line, there were, you know, there were people that would get angry because their food wasn't getting there at, right at the exact time. And it, it reminded me of everything that's kind of going on right now because everybody was standing in a single file line. They were waiting on their order number and everything, even the colors on the wall, everything in general was nice, orderly, very neutral, neutral colors, nothing that was controversial, nothing that was edgy, just very inviting. I believe this kind of set up like an atmospheric attitude, if you will, because when the customers did get a little frustrated because uh, their orders were not there on time, uh, they were able to stay more calm and I think that if, if things were more edgier and things were just more controversial it, Like if the colors were crazy or if anything was like out of sorts or anything then Those people would probably act out a little bit more That's what it feels like. It feels like everything's becoming more synthetic that's a really good word for this. But as interesting as this is, there's always something more interesting to me. That's right, you guessed it. I wanna know what you think, so why don't you go leave your creative and interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up for this like. As always, brothers and sisters, I will see you in the next video. The world's changing, but is it really? Has it, or has it always been this way? And we're just now noticing. <laughs> I know that you're repping if you're not repping your bacon. How do you become a member of the Rep Squad? Well, all you gotta do is subscribe and notification turn on. Be in the comment section for every single video because I'm gonna be there. Greg the Cat's gonna be there and the rest of the Rep Squad community as well. And I expect to see you there too because this channel loves you.